Welcome again, students. In today's video, we will be looking at the June 2022 Performance Task Mathematics paper for grade five. The paper lasts for one hour, 30 minutes. So let's get to the instructions. All right, so the general instruction says that this task has four parts. Part one, part two, part three, and part four. You're going to read the information in each part carefully. Use the information provided to answer all questions in each part. That means you're gonna do every single question, every single part of this paper. All right, so let me show you what's on this page altogether, and then we will go into reading where I can zoom it again. Just trying to show you what's on the paper altogether. All right, so it says planning for a class trip. All right, now I'll zoom again so that I can make it as big as possible so it's easy for you guys to follow as I read. All right, planning for a class trip. The PTA of Sweet Town Primary School is planning a trip for grade five students. The trip will be on Tuesday, June 28, 2022. The PTA is having a difficult time deciding on which venue to take the students to. Three venue options have been recommended to the PTA. City Zoo, Windy Water Park, and the Sonic Adventure Park, okay? These are the three options. You have the Zoo, City Zoo, Windy Water Park, and Sonic Adventure Park. All right, so your task is to help the PTA select a venue for the trip based on its popularity, how long it takes to get to the venue, and the cost of the trip, okay? So we're gonna be looking at those options, those, those aspects, the popularity, how long it takes to get to the venue, and the cost of the trip. So part one, most popular venue. A survey was done to find out which of the three venues was most popular among the students. The pictograph below shows the results of the survey. All right, so here's a pictograph showing the number of students who selected different venues for the class trip. All right, so let's look at the pictograph. All right, so... We have the venues and then we have the number of students. And there's a key that indicates um, for each picture, each image, what it represents. So the full person, the full man down here, see if I can circle it. So this full person here represents 10 students each. Then um, a little bit of a person, half of a person. I don't, don't even think it's half, all right? A quarter of a person represents two, and then the top half of the person represents five students. So we're going to be using the key to help us to determine the number of students who preferred each venue. Let me see what's below on this paper. Question one says, how many students responded to the survey? All right, let's make this a little bit smaller. See if everything can fit on the page at the same time. How many students responded to the survey. So we're gonna see how many students selected City View, add that to the number of students who selected Winter, Windy Water Park, and the number of students for Sonic Adventure Park. All right, so if each person, remember we said the key, this is for 10 students. So here we have three times 10, so this would be 30. 30 students for City Zoo. All right, so remember that this is represent two students each. So we have five of them, so two, four, six, eight, ten. So ten students selected Windy Water Park. And then for Sonic Adventure, we had ten and then five plus five. So that's a total of ten plus five, that's fifteen, plus five more, that's twenty. Guys, you have to pay attention to the key. Well, that gives you the information you need to determine what numbers you're going to be adding. So question one says, how many students responded to the survey? Okay, so let's put that on the screen.
All right, so we could show our work in here as well. I mean, I did it up here so we could see where the numbers are. Um, so we could put that in a sentence form first and then show the work. And you know, we could do the work in first. Doesn't matter as long as all the information is presented. All right, so a total of 60, and of course you would have done the calculation, 60 students responded to the sur survey, okay? All right, so let's just do the working out in this section as well. So it would have been 30 plus 10 plus 20. And you could have labeled them as well. Okay, you could have labeled it as well. All right, so 60 students, okay? A total of 60 students responded to the survey. And that would be what you would need to do to get the number one answer correct. Uh, two says, which venue is most popular? Okay, so which venue? So again, we go back to what we calculated. All right, so popularity means, you know, the highest number of students um, selected that option so the most popular here 30 for city zoo so city zoo was the most popular option so you could simply type that in sentence form okay which venue was most popular and we said city zoo city zoo was the most popular venue as it was chosen by the as it was selected by Thirty students. All right, and again, guys, I just put this in, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to word it in this way, okay? You can choose your own way. These questions, and there's no one set way to write the the, the sentence is once you have the information that City Zoo was the most popular, you don't even necessarily need to put in that how many students were um, selected. It, it, um, you don't necessarily need to put how many students selected City Zoo, but it helps to show that you understand the question and all of that, okay? So you could simply have said City Zoo was the most popular venue or, you know, City Zoo was chosen by more students than the others. However you want to put it, as long as the information is there. You could have written your sentence in any other way. All right, then it says, what fraction of the students chose Windy Water Park? What fraction of the students chose Windy Water Park? So let's go back to the option. So Windy Water Park, a total of 10 students. And what was the num total number of students? 60. So it was 10 out of 60. So the fraction, Okay, so the fraction could have been, let me put this down a bit. What fraction of the students? So 10 out of 60. Now, if you have this fraction, then that's fine. Or you could have reduced it to its lowest term by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by a common factor. And I could have used 10 to divide each, okay? And that would have given us one over six, okay? So if you divide 10 by 10 and 60 by 10, you end up with one over six. So 10 over 60, that's a fraction. So 
that's the answer, or you could have reduced it to its lowest term. So one six of the students chose Windy Water Park. All right, question, oh, part two. All right, so let me reduce this a bit so we can see everything on the screen at the same time. And then while I read, I'll just make it a little bigger. All right, so here we have time taken to get to the venues and they're showing us where the school is and the different locations and how much time it takes from the school to each location. Okay, so I'm gonna make it bigger so I can read it and you can follow. All right, part two, time taken to get to the venues. On the day of the trip, buses will be provided to transport students from the school to the venue and back to the school. The PTA is concerned about the time it will take to get to each venue. The map below shows the school, the three venues, and the time it will take to get to each venue. All right, so here's a map showing the school, the three venues, and the time it will take to travel to each venue. All right, so from the school to City Zoo. So from the school to City Zoo, one hour and 15 minutes. From the school to Windy Water Park, it's 60 minutes. And from the school to Sonic Adventure Park, it's 50 minutes, okay? Let's see what we're gonna be doing with this information. Question four says, the bus will leave at 8 a.m. In the space provided in the table below, you're going to write the time that the student will arrive at each venue and the latest time that they will have to leave each venue in order to be back at the school by 6 p.m. You're going to use the map to help you. So what we're going to be doing for each venue, we're going to be selecting the arrival time and the departure time, okay? so. The bus will leave at 8 a.m., that much we know. What we have to look back at the map for is how long it takes us um, from the school to each um, location, okay? So I'm going to go get the information there, put it here so that we have everything on the screen at the same time. So let's go back to C. All right, so for City Zoo, it takes 1 hour 15 minutes. And then 60 minutes for Windy Water Park and 50 minutes for Sonic. Then I'm just going to put this information over here on this side. So for City Zoo, it takes one hour and 15 minutes. For Windy Water Park, it takes one hour and for Sonic, it takes 50 minutes, okay? Or maybe I should put changes to. Uh, let me change that to 60. All right, so for this one, it takes 60 minutes. 60 minutes is the same as one hour. And the other one, it takes one hour, 15 minutes. All right, so we have the information here on the screen. And of course, on the screen, we also it also tells us that the bus will leave at eight. Okay, so we have everything right here that will help us to determine the time the students will arrive at each venue and the latest time that they have to leave. So for City Zoo, it takes one hour and 15 minutes. So if they leave at eight o'clock, one hour and 15 minutes from eight o'clock, they would arrive at 9.15. So one hour plus another 15 minutes. So one hour from 8 o'clock to is um, 9 o'clock. And then another 15 minutes, it will be 9.15. So it, they will arrive at City Zoo at 9.15. Okay. What time would they arrive at Windy Water Park if it takes 60 minutes? 60 minutes, like we said, is one hour. So they would arrive one hour later. They leave at 8 o'clock. They would arrive at 9 o'clock. Now, Sonic Adventure Park, it takes 50 minutes, okay? So for 50 minutes, let me put them here so you understand that this is minutes we're talking about. Why is my thing not writing? All right, minutes, okay? 
Um, so it takes 50 minutes. I would have been M I N S, but, but let's let's work with this. All right, so 50 minutes from eight o'clock plus 50 minutes would give us 850. No, where we were, where we have been adding to the time they're going to leave at nine, um, eight o'clock, we added one hour, 15 minutes, then we added 60 minutes, and we added 50 minutes for each of these locations. Pretty much, we're going to be doing the opposite when we're talking about the departure time. So remember, we just completed the time that the students will arrive at each venue. Now we're going to the column that deals with what time they have to leave each venue in order to be back at the school by six. So we would have to now subtract one hour and 15 minutes from six o'clock, okay? To see what's the latest time they will have to leave the venue. All right, so in order to get back at six o'clock and it takes them one hour, 15 minutes to get back to school, right? They would have to leave City Zoo by 4.45. So if we take an hour off, it will get us to five o'clock, then another 15 minutes. They would have to leave by 4.45 p.m. Okay, now Windy Water Park, it takes one hour, 60 minutes. So we just subtract one hour from six o'clock and that gives us five o'clock. So they have to leave by five o'clock. No, it only takes 50 minutes from Sonic Adventure Park. So for them to, what's the latest they could leave Sonic Adventure Park? If it takes them 50 minutes, they could leave at 5.10. Okay. So let's do that and bring this up some. So it says, based on what we have done, we look at the arrival time and the departure time. Part B says, which venue will allow students the most time to enjoy the attraction? Which venue will allow the students the most time to enjoy? So for City Zoo, they're going to arrive at 9.15 and leave 4.45. Winter Park, they're going to arrive at 9 and leave at 5. Sonic, they're going to arrive at 8.50 and they leave at 5.10. So when we look at the options there, then the, when if they, the earlier they get there and the later they leave, that would allow them the most time. So Sonic, that's the third option, Sonic Adventure Park, they would arrive at the venue much earlier than the other two options. And then they would be able to stay later because it doesn't take as much time for them to travel back to school. So the venue that would allow students the most time to enjoy the attraction would be Sonic Adventure Park. All right, and you could simply write the answer down or it's best to put it in a sentence form. So Sonic Adventure Park would allow the students the most time to enjoy the attraction. Okay, that's the answer there. Put it in as best as possible. All right, so Sonic Adventure Park would allow the students the most time to enjoy. As I said, they arrive there much earlier than the others and they get to stay longer um, because it takes less time to get there and back. All right, so let's get to the next question, part three. Oh, all right, so part three now, we're going to be talking about the cost for the trip. All right, so the trip will be on Tuesday, June 28th. Let me make it a little bigger so we can see. The trip will be on Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. The PTA will pay the entire cost of the trip. The total cost of the trip includes transportation for all students and the entry fee for all students. 
The total transportation cost for all students to visit each venue is as follows. For City Zoo, 15000 For Windy Winter Park, sorry, Windy Water Park, 12000 And for Sonic Adventure Park, $10,000. Okay? So I'm assuming it's based on the distance, then that perhaps accounts for the cost because for city zoo it takes one or one fifty minutes so maybe that's why the transportation is a little bit more sonic adventure park that was the closest one so of course the transportation cost would be cheapest all right so that's the cost for each the transportation cost now we're going to be seeing the table that talks about the entry fee for each of the venues all right so the entry fee for each of the venues city zoo all right so each one has their own um, payment scheme, I suppose. All right, so for City Zoo, it's 250 per student. That's just a flat rate. It doesn't matter when you go or whatever, it's 250 per student. Now, for Windy Water Park, if you have less than 75 students, then each student is going to pay $200. Now, if you have a group of 75 students or more, then each student pays $170. Now, for Sonic Water Park, Mondays to Fridays, students pay $150. On Saturdays and Sundays, students pay $300. Okay, so let's see what other information we will need to answer the, follow the next question. So question five says there are 100 students in grade five. What is the total cost the PTA will pay to visit each venue if all 100 students go on the trip? Remember, it's the PTA paying for the trip. So remember, we're going to have to calculate now the transportation cost plus the fee to go enter the entry fee for each um for the venue for each student. Okay, so one hundred students. We need to find out the total cost that the PTA will pay to visit each venue if all one hundred students go on the trip. So City Zoo is first. Let me see what's on the page, and then we can always go back. All right, so we pretty much just have the work um, space for working out each question. All right, so let's start with City Zoo. So it's 100 students. Let's see what the transportation cost was and the entry fee and do our calculations for City Zoo. All right, so for City Zoo, the transportation cost was $15,000 and then 250 per student. So $15,000 plus 250 per student. So let's go to City Zoo and do that calculation. All right, so for City Zoo, all right, so hold on, let me try to, okay. So for City Zoo, it's 15,000. Remember it was the, long, the, the farthest and then 250 per student. So we're going to be adding the transportation cost of 15,000 plus there's 100 students and each student the cost is 250 so plus $250 times 100 okay so it would be 15,000 Plus 250 times 100, of course, you can work that out if you know how to. By now, you should know how to multiply multiples of 10. You simply add two zeros. So, of course, if, you, if you're not sure, then you do it however you need to to get the answer. So this would have been 25,000. Okay. So 15,000 plus 25,000, you add those together. And that gives us a total of $40,000. So it would cost the PTA $40,000 for the students, all 100 students, to go to City Zoo. All right, so that's that. Let's get to the next location.
All right. So Windy Water Park. So twelve thousand dollars for the transportation, and then it would be not. They're not less than seventy five. They are more than seventy five because remember it's a hundred students. So they would pay a hundred and seventy dollars for each student. Okay. So. It's twelve thousand for the transportation, and then one seventy for each student. So let's go to Win the Water Park. So twelve thousand, and of course you guys would have your paper to be able to look back at the information as you please. But because of the computer screen, everything can't be on the screen at the same time. So it's twelve thousand. Then remember, it's one hundred and seventy per student times one hundred students. Okay, so 12,000, that's the transportation cost. Plus 170 times 100, again, we can simply add the two zeros. If not, you do your calculations to get the answer. That would have been 17,000. So that gives us a total. When we add 12,000 plus 17,000, it gives us a total of 29,000. Again, guys, I'm going through, but you can pause the video to do your own calculations just to make sure that you you end up with the totals that I have, right? But in the interest of time, I'm just going through, but you can pause the video at any point, do your calculations and then come back to see if it matches my answer. All right, so that's for Windy Water Park, 29,000. Let's go back to Sonic and see what the information is for Sonic. All right, so again, Sonic, the that's the one closest to school. It's ten thousand dollars for the transportation cost and the trip. All right, so we now have to check what day the trip is. I recall a trip date, but let's go back for your benefit. The trip will be on Tuesday. Okay, so it wouldn't be Saturday or Sunday price. It would be Monday to Friday price, which is a hundred and fifty per student. So ten thousand for the transportation and then a hundred and fifty dollars for each student so ten thousand that's the transportation plus one hundred and fifty students times a hundred sorry one hundred and fifty dollars for each student times the number of students one hundred so again we simply add two zeros if you're not sure guys do your multiplication as you wish to end to find the answer so ten thousand plus fifteen thousand because one hundred and fifty times a hundred that's fifteen thousand so the total cost for sonic adventure park would be twenty five thousand of course we might have put in a dollar signs and all of that okay let's get to what else do we need to do? All right, part four says recommendation to the PTA. So question six, which venue would you recommend that the PTA select for the class trip? And you're going to give two reasons to support your answer using evidence from the task, okay? So what were some of the things that we found from this? We looked at the popularity. Let's go back to that. All right, so the popularity. Most of the students selected City Zoo, and then second place, their um, Sonic Adventure, and then Windy Water Park. So the popularity. And then we also looked at the distance from the school, how long it takes them, and how much time the students would have to enjoy each. It takes less time to go to Sonic, more time to get to City Zoo. And then we looked at the cost. Okay, remember the PTA paying for this, so we have they would have to determine, um, you know, based on the cost, what makes sense for them and their budget. So based on the cost, we see that City Zoo cost the most forty thousand, um, Windy Water Park twenty nine, and then Sonic Adventure Park twenty five thousand. So which venue would you recommend for the PTA? And two reasons to support your answer using evidence from the task. So based on what I've seen, and of course, like I said, you guys would have time to go and ch check the answers. 
Um, which venue would you recommend? I would recommend, what's wrong with my spelling today? I would recommend Sonic Adventure Park for the class trip. Okay, now you need to tell two reasons to support your answer. So you simply add which venue, all right, Sonic Adventure Park. What are the two reasons based on? So when we looked at, let me go back one more time. The cost, Sonic Adventure was the cheapest, 25000 So that's a good reason why they would choose that. And of course, it also allowed them to enjoy the more, the students would have get to spend a lot more time there, right? Since it takes less time to and from the venue, then they would have more time. So I'm gonna be using those two reasons. Yes, of course, more students chose, um, which one was it? The city zoo, but the city zoo is more expensive and it takes a lot longer to get there. So that wouldn't necessarily be the best option in the long run. So give two reasons to support your answer. Two, reasons i would recommend sonic adventure park are so two reasons are all right so one the students would have more time to enjoy the venue. That's one reason. And you could explain further if you choose. And then two, it is the least expensive option expensive venue okay and you could tell the amount as well all right so those are the two reasons all right i would recommend it because the students would have more time to enjoy the venue than if they choose the other two and two it is the least expensive venue of the three okay all right so again guys i just put this in but of course you can choose to explain in your own way with your own words, but you know, as long as pretty much the answer you can give clear reasons for your answer, then you should be fine. All right, let me see if there's anything. Oh, that's the end of the paper again. Not very hard, but you guys would have to make sure that you're reading and understanding and answering and doing your calculations correctly. Once again, guys, share, like, subscribe, and watch out for more content. As I always say, see you in the next video.